네, 감사합니다. Just, I'm supposed to speak in English, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, since I have to speak one language or the other, uh, I'll do it in English. <laughs> this ecological internet, this is uh, uh, the research topic I'm working on now. <clears throat> and uh, based on the, my uh, experience of last about 40 to 50 years on the internet and the related area, and looking into the uh, next, uh, ideally next 40 to 50 years, but actually I'm sort of looking into the next about 10, 20 uh, years. And the title, uh, we name it Ecological Internet about uh, four or five years ago. Okay, <clears throat> this is a sort of order I'm going to talk. <laughs> First of all, uh, internet population, Today, we have around 3 billion, about 40%. So we passed the tipping point already. So it will go up to the uh, 70, 80% of world population you know, sooner or later. And uh, <clears throat> we expect by end of next decade, say like 2030, in 15 years or so, uh, probably will reach five, six, seven billion, uh, 60, 70, 80 percent of world population. That seems to be almost given. Then under this <coughs> environment, how do we facilitate new internet users? We just uh, let them uh, adjust to the, our internet, or they are. Uh, substantially different those uh, environment, in particular uh, economic situation. So do we need to facilitate them? And uh, most of them come from the Asia and Africa. Their, uh, their system, economic system, social system is substantially different from the uh, uh, USA, where the internet is originated. Then I'm looking into the much further. Can we do this one ecological, ecologically sound manner, the rather than market driven, which we are doing now? And uh, first, there are two things. When we say the ecological, uh, first of all, society, human society. How do we harmonize this internet cyberspace to the human society? Or are we going to ask a human society to adjust to this uh, cyberspace, internet? And th th that's not a uh, proper approach. The internet, cyberspace should adapt to the social so uh, human society. Then next, uh, physical society, physical environment, the earth or world. How do we harmonize with the earth? is the another issue. Those two sort of come together. And uh, so the fundamental question is, uh, can we do in a current scheme market-driven approach? And uh, for the global warming, we found out market-driven approach would not work. And uh, how about this artificial, uh, this uh, cyberspace? Uh, that's the one I'm going to elaborate in this 20 minutes. First of all, this internet, or you may call this cyberspace, which is more proper in the coming uh, uh, years, becoming a social infrastructure. And what, then the question is, what kind of social infrastructure uh, do we want to develop? This soft social structure is, a very, in a sense, very special. First of all, this is global. Second, is, it is critical. So the critical global social infrastructure based on the internet. Then how do we develop in the coming 
decade or two. Uh, then let's look into the example in the, in the past. In the last 100 years, 150 years, uh, what did they do on uh, those, uh, uh, in, a, in our civilization? Let's pick up uh, uh, transportation. Suppose, okay, let's pick up a Seoul or a Tokyo. Okay, from tomorrow, you cannot, you cannot use a train anymore. You have to use a car, only car. What will happen? The city would not function anymore. And we really appreciate, I guess, train. Let's pick up a Southern California where I did a graduate school. It's whole of those cities based on uh, uh, automobile. Uh, how do we do it? Suppose automobile is not a way to do it. Can we modify, change the Southern California? Can you make uh, the Southern California as a train-based just like uh, Japan, Korea, or Europe. Okay, so the, this infrastructure development is a, a very, uh, it's not a trivial, it's very serious undertaking in the long term. Another issue is that now we have a one billion uh, automobile in the world. And uh, if we follow the American, Okay, in the USA, they say like a one car per person. I don't know if they're still proud of the, uh, this phenomenon. Okay, if that's good one, okay, let's do it globally. Then uh, instead of one billion, we'll have a six, seven billion automobile in the world. Do you know what will happen to the world? Even a one billion, we can really sustain environmentally, ecologically. Then shall we say like, uh, okay, American or well, so developed country, they are okay to have a one, person, one car per person. Under developed country, no, you can't. Only one car per 10 person. You cannot do that way. Okay, what happening in the uh, internet or cyberspace? I'm going to just sort of brief. Uh, first of all, World Garden. Uh, or the uh, uh, gated community. Uh, it's a very good development in the USA, the f called the Facebook, 1.5 billion. Give you an insight, it's a fairly uh, comfortable, but you cannot take a data out. You can take, bring a data in, but you cannot take it out. And uh, another one is uh, China. Always if the USA does, then China also do, but a different way. The Great Firewall to protect their uh, Chinese season. And the next one is a data explosion. It's just tremendous, as you, you heard many times. And recently, because of the video traffic, uh, traffic, data traffic is really exploding. Then the coming thing is the IoT. American call the IoT, European calls the M2M. Uh, connecting a device to the internet. Like uh, today, number of users, in human users, the number of device is about the same. Either way, it's about uh, two, three, four billion. In 10 years or so, uh, internet of thing will sort of go to the trillion. For each person, we'll have a hundred, several hundred of the device connected to the internet. Yeah, they generate a lot of traffic. Uh, together, we have a those data explosion. Now, how do we do it? Uh, technically and socially. Then for this matter, we're doing a lot of those fundamental study. How do we do it? Since this is not a short-term issue, long-term issue, 
And uh, this is the area in uh, those science and engineering. And uh, similarly, we do also in uh, 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 social science and political science, you know, doing a similar study to accommodate uh, this phenom phenomenon of uh, cyberspace. And uh, then we have a problem. We start having a serious side effect. Some of them is uh, globally uh, cybersecurity. This is uh, technically, socially, we just don't know how to handle. And uh, <clears throat> cyber crime, cyber terrorism, cyber warfare, and the famous those uh, 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 okay, uh, next one is uh, at the personal level, uh, privacy, like a big company like a Facebook and a Google, they have uh, so much data on each of us. And uh, they say they are not abusing. But at any time, those companies or whoever hack into those companies' database could abuse in order to do whatever the purpose, uh, infringe those privacy. Then addiction and the cyber violence, we have those personal level, we do have a problem too. And uh, in the next one, big thing is the internet governance. It used to start from the USA, but now, since it's becoming those global infrastructure, so that we have to do the, uh, this internet coordination globally. And uh, here is the current those, uh, stakeholders. And uh, now we are debating what kind of those internet governance model are we looking into in the coming decades. And uh, a lot of those are papers coming up in the political science and the social science, sociology, and uh, uh, the law. Then um, my proposal for the, in the coming decades, ecological internet, those are the three areas I'm going to comment. Uh, why uh, ecological internet now? We have to think about the internet, the long-term issue. Since it will be a critical global social infrastructure, infrastructure so the, how do we want it? The next, if we know, then how do we engineer to realize it? And uh, for this matter, so far we have been doing uh, the market driven. Then uh, can we come up with what we want by the market driven approach? And uh, probably not. It's even since this is a global infrastructure, so that we have to have some kind of a global consensus. And how do you develop a global consensus? Fortunately, we have a similar case right next to us, global warming. They try to protect the earth, and they found out market-driven won't work. So they try to develop a, a consensus globally called the IPCC. And uh, so that we may have to do similarly. And here at the end, you can see the, uh, not just for the current users, also the, the coming, those are new users. They should have voice too, because since this is a global uh, infrastructure. Then uh, this one, as I said earlier, it has to harmonize with those human society, human culture, and those global environment, physical environment, both. And uh, which are not easy. <clears throat> so the first of all, there's a couple of those wishful thinking. So the internet which we can, which we can sustain. Okay. Uh, and we want to sustain. Then we have to, we want to harmonize with the human society. And those internet governance based on the consensus. 
like an uh, ecological democracy, not uh, uh, market-driven. So this part, I got an idea from the, the Robin uh, Eckersley of uh, the Green State. And uh, here there's a couple of those uh, issues. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, new internet users, how do we facilitate? Because the way they use internet will be substantially different from us. Do you know how they use it? Like uh, we, the first uh, those, uh, billion, we have a smartphone, laptop, and the desktop computer are used in different ways. Okay, those are new users coming up. They have only one device. That's all they can afford. So the way they use will be substantially different from the uh, uh, us. And uh, the second, I said many times, uh, the environment. How do we? Uh, how much is Earth? Like uh, we are generating a lot of those. Uh, 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 spend a lot of energy and uh, contributing to global warming and it'll be more so. So the, how do we do it? Especially those uh, uh, emerging countries. They will generate a lot of those uh, uh, energy and we saying, no, no, you cannot do it. You have to reduce. Is the, those issues. And the local culture. I'm working on uh, one of the projects I'm doing is uh, Africa. Do you know Africa? There's about uh, several thousand languages today. Do you know in 20, 30 years, if we go in this space, how many languages will survive? At most one. That's the power of the uh, internet. Because like many American, uh, no, African, they are typically bilingual. So they can use uh, Facebook and uh, Google the very well. But uh, if they try to do all those things in uh, their local language, no. Nothing is available. So the sort of accelerating of elimination of local language, local culture. Probably that's not about what we want in the longer term. And uh, then this market driven, this is very tough. How do we move from the market driven to the consensus based development without giving much damage to the innovation? This is very tough because Innovative, innovation is sort of a one advantage of the internet, and of which uh, this uh, uh, consensus-based development, can we keep uh, those uh, culture of those uh, innovation is uh, 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 not easy. And uh, toward the end, <laughs> the remark, First of all, by looking at the last 40, 40, 50 years and looking into the future, uh, we have a very good consensus. This internet revolution is only the beginning. It's just beginning. It's not halfway or anything. So we have to sort of uh, uh, handle accordingly. And uh, then uh, we should not make a mistake. We should learn from the, our mistake. Like, uh, like automobile, uh, nuclear system. For example, nuclear system, nuclear waste. We have to keep, uh, say, like uh, 10,000 years, 100,000 years. We just don't have such a those, uh, engineering know-how. If you ask us, OK, keep uh, 50 years, yes, we can do it. 100 years, yes, probably we could, we could do it. 1,000 years, I'm not too sure. 10,000 years, 100,000 years, no, we don't have any know-how, for example. 
And uh, then we have a minimal problem. Automobiles are again same thing. Uh, like uh, the last year, this year, we, we have a lot of problems in the war. Do you know how many people get killed in the war per year? About 50,000 people, roughly speaking. Do you know how many people get killed by the uh, automobile per year? 1.3 million. But we accept 1.3 million get killed, but we don't accept the war. So we have to do something in uh, this uh, uh, automobile. So the, those kind of things may give us some idea how do we develop a, a critical global social infrastructure. And, uh, and for this, seems to be this openness, like the way we're doing you know, this, this uh, creative commons, openness of data, education, research, is really important. You know, to approach this one, since this is a long term, those are uh, uh, issues. And also, the, we have to develop a uh, human resource, the people who could address, engage in these issues. Seems to be this uh, time frame is something we need uh, 20, 30, 40 years to develop a good those, uh, infrastructure. Okay, here's a reference. Thank you. 네, 교수님 감사합니다.